What looks like a Zortrax M200 and has some similar features to an Ultimaker? Well, that would be the Wanhao Duplicator 6, and in today's review, we're going to check it out. Let's get started. Ah, oh, welcome back to Maker's Muse, guys. So what I have here is the Wanhao Duplicator 6, sent to me thanks to the Ultimate 3D Printing Store. So I've actually taken my sweet time getting this review out and there's a few reasons why. Firstly, this is not the first Duplicator 6 that the Ultimate 3D Printer Store organized to send to me. Actually, the first one got damaged in shipping. Actually, really damaged. Everything was bent out of shape and looked like the couriers had used it for soccer practice. So I had to request a second unit to actually get a proper unbiased review out to you guys. So huge thanks to Wanhao and the Ultimate 3D Printing Store for actually organizing that for me. So in terms of specs, the Wanhao Duplicator 6 has a print volume of 200 by 200 by roughly 200 high. That height does change depending on your bed level and nozzle height, so it might be as low as 175 or as high as 200. The machine itself is completely sheet metal, thick aluminium, sheet metal steel. It weighs about 13 kilos and is extremely rigid, although, as I said before, not completely immune to courier abuse. It uses a very unusual motion system which you see in the Ultimaker and the Zortrax systems where the head moves around in the X and Y coordinates and the print bed just lowers down on the Z which means the print accuracy is much higher than you might see in a bed that moves back and forth in the X or Y axis. Also it means that the print bed slowly drops meaning it's awesome for time lapses and I did get some really nice time lapses off this machine during testing. The interface is a click wheel, not a touch screen, regrettably, and I really don't like the how, how the encoder is set up. So with a click wheel, you scroll around the different menus, and some menus need more clicks than others, so it does take a while to learn it. I have eventually learnt it, and I'm more familiar with it now, but starting off, it was very alien to me and very uncomfortable to use. So I would have just liked to see a touch screen. Lots of machines are moving to touch screens, and I often would find myself touching the non-touch screen, to try to access the menus. In terms of the actual routines it has, it has a really handy uh, filament loading and unloading routine, routine which I did use quite a lot and I will miss using on some other machines like the Wanhal Duplicator i3. It's definitely a lot easier to use than that. And also it has a assisted bed leveling routine. It is a manual bed with four springs on each corner. It's very strong uh, tough springs by the way, but it does use a manually assisted bed leveling system where it will move around the head, but you still need to adjust them yourself. Going back to the mechanics, this machine is one of the few I've tested with an actual legit ball screw for the Z-axis which gives you much higher accuracy and a smoother motion than you would get out of a lead screw or even belts. The extruder is being called the Mark 11 and it's sort of again very similar to the Zortrax style systems with a block on that strange motion system and it has a 0.4mm nozzle out of the box but you can change that pretty easily. And the feeder gear works actually quite well, it's a spring loaded gear system and it does grip the filament very well to the, to the point where I was actually just using filament in a box with a pen shoved through the roll and it was sucking it through the top and it had no issues with the filament grinding or the filament slipping. The machine is primarily SD card driven so you just load your G-code onto the, the SD card and pop it in and then run it through that or I guess you could also tether it via the USB-A type port on the back but I don't really recommend that. I always load my G-code up via SD. Now, there's no Wi-Fi or anything fancy like that but again you don't really need that sort of stuff. I don't like Wi-Fi. But that's enough talking about the machine. Why have I taken so long to test it? And what do I think of its print quality? Well, I started with stuff like this. So this is the Lattice Cube. This is a very early version I did. This is printed in a PLA. It's a Poly Alchemy Elixir natural blend. And it's okay at face value, but looking closer, the undersides of these rods are very rough, very droopy. And I found that unusual initially. So I changed to some other PLAs. I went to the PLA that Wanhao came with, which is a natural PLA, no colorants added. That was my first attempt. So this is my torture cube, and it has stringing, <laughs> stringing up the wazoo, basically. It is nuts amount of stringing. And this had retraction, although probably not nearly enough. Maybe the temperature was a bit too high. And it is ridiculous in terms of string. It actually quite, looks quite nice if you want that sort of effect. But that's not what I was after. And it all comes down to cooling. Unfortunately, the Wanhao Duplicator 6 sucks at cooling prints. And that's all because of the fan duct they've used. 
So essentially this machine is kind of a clone of the Zortrax and an Ultimaker, but they haven't cloned the cooling duct correctly. So what they have instead is a injection molded piece of plastic with a small fan, 40 or 50 millimeter fan that blows down into the plastic and then it blows down and out the bottom of that plastic shroud completely away from where the nozzle actually is. Which means even when the fan's on, there's not much force or airflow going through and it means that it doesn't come close to cooling where it should be cooling on the print. Which means from stock, the Duplicator 6 has a huge issue with stringing. So this is a larger torture test I did, which is my revolved one. And again, even with my retractions dialed down as much as I could, there is still stringing. And also it did fail, unfortunately, in some areas, but that's not too unusual. It is a very difficult test. And even when I reduced the temperatures and made the retractions even higher, I did get this result, but at the expense of layer adhesion because the temperature was so low that the layers are barely bonded together. So I thought, okay, if this machine isn't that great stock you with PLA, then what about ABS? Maybe it's a fantastic ABS machine. So I tried printing some ABS. This is my first result. So this is my Turnergy Action Cam holder. And it's actually pretty good. I'm quite happy with this. The layers are nice, but you can see clearly where the warping has started to occur. This is still an open frame machine, which means that it still can suffer from draft and warping. Although there is covers you can get, which I'll get to later. So this does work, but there is definitely warping occurring. So I thought I'd just go for broke and try my torture test in ABS. So this is a spectacular failure and I can see what happens. So judging from the base, it's warped up pretty much in the first three or four layers, it's come loose off the build tack like surface. And then it's obviously stuck to the print head for ages, making up a ball of goop. And then it just kind of went around and made a bird's nest. It's funny because you can kind of see the print like where it should have been, but this is just a nightmare print. And this is an ABS and it only happened like this because it couldn't adhere to the print bed. So what does that mean? It means that this machine stock without the covers and without any modifications to the cooling, isn't that great at ABS and isn't that great at PLA because of the cooling issues? What about something in between? What about PET? Well, actually, it seems to print PET really damn well. So this is my torture test, scaled up a little bit to fit into the Wanhao Duplicator 6. And again, a little bit of stringing, that's quite common with PET. And again, again with the cooling issue, probably expected. But the layers are nice and tight. The undersides are okay, better than the PLA prints. And this is actually a really good result off that torture test. It's a difficult print and it's done quite well. So maybe if you get the Duplicator 6, maybe you're better off with PET, which is actually quite interesting. But I didn't want to discount PLA too far yet. So I tried one last thing and that is vase mode. So with vase mode, I figured it won't be crossing over itself. So it won't have to do any stringing. It's going to be printing fast. I, this machine can supposedly print up to 160 millimeters per second. I only printed up to hundred in my vase modes test. And I thought, okay, I'll just chuck some random low polygon stuff together to make an interesting print. And this is the interesting print I did. And I'm really happy with this result. So this is a custom matter hackers, uh, like a Miku Hatsune blue which I bought off of one of my mates in, in America. And it's a vase mode, so it's completely hollow and it looks nice. Like it looks really nice. The cooling again at the top, you can see that it is struggling once it gets to the top, but overall this is a freaking fantastic print. And it almost redeems the issues I've had with the Duplicator 6 in my eyes, almost. So where does that leave us with this machine? So it prints accurately. It's fairly quiet, it's fast. The interface is okay. I'm not a big fan of the click wheel, but I definitely got used to using it. The cooling just sucks. And that is the biggest letdown from this machine. The engineering's gone into it, but then it's been let down by this really poor quality and design fan shroud. So what I would do if I own this machine is I would rip the fan off, I'd replace it with a screw cage like you see in the Prusa Mark II, and I would give it a fan shroud that blows air evenly around the print so you can print in PLA, no issues. But if you do want to print in ABS, you can actually get clear acrylic covers for this machine to keep the heat in and therefore improve your quality of ABS prints and stop them warping. It's not the cheapest machine on the market. It's definitely quite robust and sturdy and definitely more accurate than, a, than the Wanhao i3 version 2.1 or the Wanhao i3 plus. But for the price, to be honest, personally, I would probably still go with those machines just because for me, 
they seem to offer a better experience out of the box in printing in PLA. Although this machine could probably do it much more accurately if the cooling was addressed, it's just a big price jump for, in my opinion, not that much of a better machine. Which is unfortunate because it is very pretty, it's very nicely designed, just let down in a few areas. So thanks for watching guys, hope you enjoyed this review of the Wanhao Duplicator 6. Again, massive thanks to the Ultimate 3D Printing Store for sending this out to me. This is actually a prize for my 25 thousand subscriber giveaway so huge thanks to Ralph for being hugely patient for me this is going off to you very shortly but uh, yeah <laughs> it has been a while actually almost up to 35,000 which is interesting so I hope you've enjoyed this video guys if you want to see future 3d printing tips tricks and reviews on makers news hit that subscribe button it helps me out a huge amount and look forward to seeing you again very shortly catch you later guys bye he has placed satellites into orbit. He has actually walked in space.